Noi dobbiamo decidere solo una cosa. Chi deve morire prima, lei o io? Rarely I've seen a unanimous judgment like I've seen in regard to your interpretation of this film. And everybody is raving in Italy, in the US, everywhere the film has been seen. You play more than one character because there was more than one Buscetta. Was it like learning to be more than one character in one film for you? Well, actually it was. He, he, every role he was playing, every name he gave, him, gave himself, every face he put up was a different face, was a different way of speaking, was a different way of behaving. Uh, it's certainly one of the best characters I had the play to, I had the chance to handle with a great director. How did you learn Sicilian so well? First thing, I watched everything that I could watch. I've been trying to find every single video, even of his private life, that, that could help me. As you know, most of the time you couldn't watch his face, so I took the original videos, I tried to lit them up a little bit so to have the chance to, to, to see his eyes, which is very difficult to, to see. Only in a few situations where he's, when he's not speaking, you, you can see him like as at the beginning of the Maxa trial, but otherwise there's no chance to have a look at him. So, Can you switch to it for a second? <laughs> in English, give us a little shit that. Now English. you see, it's a long time I haven't been speaking like him, so it might escape to me, is the sound. But you know, he was very calm. He used to, uh, to use pauses. He wanted you to know that he was thinking. So if you, if you make a question to him, it would take his time. But by the, the time he was thinking, you were waiting for, for his uh, answer. And that would put you in a certain situation. He knew everything, he knew, he knew everything. He knew how to handle, it was, a, it was really a strategic guy. So he knew how to handle the situations. And depending on who you were speaking to, it would change his way of speaking. Io sono stato e resto un uomo d'onore. Sono loro che hanno tradito gli ideali di Cosa Nostra. Somebody who could teach me the, uh, the dialect from Palermo of the 50s, from his area, the area he belonged to, because in Palermo, depending on what area you live in, uh, the, the sound changes and even the, the vocabulary changes. So even to show his difference from the other people around him, it would put up like a, an Italian uh, slash Brazilian slash New Yorker way of speaking. But it was just to, to measure the difference between the, him and the rest of the world. You said that when, you, when he speaks with Falcone, he's a different, he has a different voice, a different tone that the one he uses, for example, with the judge, that is also magistrate and represents yeah. the state. So for him, Falcone, yes, represented the state, but it was also as a person that he respected. Yeah. How was he different, and how did, do you convey that difference in his relationship with Falcone, in the dialogues with him? Well, first of all, you have to think that he didn't really have any chance. When he came back, either he would have accepted to die, even in jail, or to collaborate, up to a limit, because that's what he did. I mean. I, he said he wasn't betraying the mafia. He said he didn't want any, any questions about drug dealings. So that was a deal that they made. But this said Falcone was born 450 meters far from where Buscetta was born. And of course, never belonging to any of the criminal organization. Uh, but he knew the nonverbal vocabulary these people had. So the first thing, the first meeting they have in Brazil, after having spoken in Brazilian with the prosecutor, with the Brazilian prosecutor, because Falcone couldn't directly make any questions to him, he turns, Buscetta turned to, her, to, to him, and in Sicilian, the first thing that he said was, Dottore Falcone, if we had to, to speak about these things, we would need nights and days and nights and days. But by, by saying Dottore Falcone, Falcone knew that Buscetta was actually acknowledging his position. I also think that for Buscetta, it was really a revolution to find on the other side of the table somebody who was so loyal to an idea of uh, 
justice. That it was, in a way, I know it's bizarre to say, but comparable to the idea of loyalty that, that Buscetta had for his laws. I don't think there was ever a friendship. Yeah. Sometimes there's a literature about this that I don't agree with. And I'm pretty sure that for Buscetta, knowing Falcone was a medal he could show on his jacket and not the other way around. Everything I'm saying, you have to put into, into what, what um, the mafia system and the mafia mentality is. So I'm not justifying anything. The only thing is that you have to know that whoever comes from the law is an enemy in the mafia mentality in thousands of years. So you can call him cop, mm -hmm. sbirro, birro, but for the history of Sicily, the, the children would say sbirro, would say cop, as one of the biggest offense you can give to somebody else. But the roots of this are so profound and so old that to get to think about them, you really have to switch and, and think that you're knowing like the language of another country, another culture, and it is a culture. Of all the American directors today, do you have a dream of a director with whom you would really love to make a film? Of course, Scorsese comes to, come, come to my mind because of the movie we made, <laughs> and the movie is just made. But there are so many directors. And you know I'm an actor, so I never know if around the corner there's somebody thinking about me. This said, I'm very happy to be an Italian actor, and I, and I think that as Italian, the Italian cinema has a lot to give. Thank you very much.